we start with a puzzle. There is a frictional force between a car tyre and the road. Does it point forwards in the direction of motion of the car or backwards? The solution will be given near the end of the video. Welcome to this Nothing Nerdy video on friction. Here is the statement from the IB Physics Guide. There are two types of friction between solids and you must understand the difference. Here is a typical multiple choice question on this topic. You should be able to answer it by the end of the video. Friction is a force which arises when two solid surfaces move across each other. It is caused by the roughness or cohesiveness of the two surfaces. A fraction of the kinetic energy of the moving surfaces is converted into thermal energy in their molecules. There are two types of friction, dynamic and static, which will both be demonstrated in the following simulation from the PHET website. Here is a person pushing a box of mass 50 kilograms initially with a force of 20 newtons. The applied force is opposed by an equal and opposite force of friction. The two forces added together give a resultant of zero newtons. Here the friction is static and the box does not move. We increase the force by 50 newtons and the box still does not move and again to 120 newtons. The frictional force is still equal and opposite to the applied force, so the box does not move but the static friction will soon reach its limit. We increase the force to 126 newtons, at which point the box moves. Static friction is overcome, and we now have a dynamic situation. Immediately, the dynamic frictional force of 94 newtons is much less than the applied force of 126 newtons. The accelerating force is the difference between the applied force and the dynamic frictional force. This graph shows how static friction changes to dynamic friction as the applied force increases. As we saw in the simulation, at first the applied force increases and the frictional force is equal and opposite to it. In our example, the maximum force of static friction is 125 newtons. Beyond this point, the box starts to move and the frictional force drops down to 94 newtons. It is now dynamic friction. And though the applied force increases further, the dynamic frictional force stays the same and is less than the maximum static frictional force was. The frictional force is measured in newtons and depends on two factors. The reaction force, R, between the surfaces in newtons and the coefficient of friction, mu, which tells us how much friction there is between the two surfaces. Mu is calculated as the ratio of two forces, so it does not have a unit. There are two versions of the friction formula, depending on whether the situation is static or dynamic. They are in the data booklet, and you can tell which is which by the subscript letters S and D. Firstly, static friction is calculated using the formula frictional force is less than or equal to mu S times R. As you saw in the simulation, the static frictional force increases to a maximum. The maximum is calculated when FF equals mu s times R. The inequality indicates that it can also take any value below this maximum as the applied force decreases. The dynamic case is easier since the frictional force does not vary and is always equal to the coefficient of dynamic friction, mu d times R. Here is how we calculate the coefficient of static friction when the object is at the point just before it moves. The frictional force is at its maximum of 125 newtons just before the box slides and the friction becomes dynamic. The reaction is equal to the size of the weight of the box and is calculated using m times g. Here we use g is 9.8 newtons per kilogram since the other values are at least two significant figures. This is the calculation for the coefficient of dynamic friction using the same method. As you can see, this value is less than mu for the dynamic case. This is the definition of static friction. It prevents motion until the applied force exceeds the maximum.
when the object is moving, the friction is dynamic, and though lower than the static maximum, it does not change as the body gets faster. It opposes, but does not prevent motion. This diagram shows a very common physics problem. A box is sliding down a slope, pulled by a force, say a sledge, pulled by a horse down a hill. The angle of the slope is theta, which is also the angle between W and the dashed line perpendicular to the slope. The most effective way to deal with this situation is to resolve the forces parallel and perpendicular to the surface. This means that the weight will be resolved into two components. As you can see here, the forces parallel to the slope are F, P and the component of the weight acting down the slope. This is the equation written at the appropriate angle. Perpendicular to the slope, we have the reaction and the other components of the weight, which are equal to each other. The formula for dynamic friction links these two equations by relating F and R. You should make sure you have practiced a few questions of this type because they often arise. This situation is dynamic, so we know that the frictional formula is mu d times r, which we can rearrange, and then we need to find a formula for f and r. f equals w sine theta as the forces parallel to the slope, and r equals w cos theta, which is the forces perpendicular to the slope. When we divide those two, we find that it's sine divided by cos, and you should know that sine divided by cos is tangent and therefore the answer is B. Here is the puzzle you heard at the beginning of the video. As you have learnt, friction opposes motion and acts in the opposite direction. In this case, we are thinking about the underside of a rotating wheel, which moves backwards relative to the direction of motion, so the frictional force points forwards. In fact, if this force were not present, the tyre would rotate in place and the car would not move at all. Friction with its tyres is the force that propels a vehicle forwards. Mm -hmm.